Mr. Murdoch's song.
You can talk of Captain, you can talk of Matthew Flinders, you can talk of Captain Stur, you can rave about explorers, tell your throat begins to hurt. Yes, I know they cross the ocean and they travel tough terrain, but there's none of them could face a trip to Lincoln on the train. <laughs> Was a blazing day in January 1982. They were praying for a southerly from Lithgow to the Loo. That's woman Loo. <laughs> I cooked from Glebe to Redfern like a lobster or a crab. Paid the sweating taxi driver and alighted from the cab. Platform 18, platform 19, there's an element of doubt. <laughs> but you've always got the indicators there to help you out. And a fellow with a microphone dispensing wisdom free. But his information and the indicators <laughs> don't understand. <laughs> Well, the train pulls out central to a soft, ironic cheer. <laughs> I'd sell me mother's wedding ring for half a glass of beer. I'm hot and in the horrors, and my thirst is looming large. And I fear that every pub we pass is over. Faces to the westward, we are sizzling on the grill. We have to stop for half an hour at some bloody hill. <laughs> we stop and start like Murphy's cart, me temper's turning sour. And at Flemington, we have to wait another half an hour. I stagger out of Lincoln, contemplating suicide. Me compass sitters melted, and me camels they have died. <laughs> My fevered brain surrounds the train with breweries and stills. And bleaching on the platform are the bones of Burke and Will. <laughs> You can talk of Matthew Flinders, you can talk of Captain Sturt, you can rave about explorers till your throat begins to hurt. Yes, I know they cross the ocean and they travel tough terrain, but there's none of them could face a trip to Lincoln on the train. <laughs>
Now Rob's keen on ale brewed in Yorkshire, and no one can argue with that. Andrew likes cricket and rugby, and Bronwyn's in love with the cat. <laughs> <laughs> we were guests in old Tom's little kingdom. I was practicing golf in the yard. Since Rob got this net for his birthday, the lawn is all pitted and scarred. Well, I practiced a couple of four irons to get myself into a groove and then settled down with a three wood, for that's where I need to improve. I'm determined to sort out the problems. I always exploit every chance. There are numerous things to consider. The take back, the grip, and the stats. It's important for golfers to pivot, to master the full shoulder turn. Oh, it has to be smooth and unhurried. It's a skill I'm determined to learn. Address, concentrate, focus. Don't take your eye off the ball. Hips are of vital importance. No lateral swaying at all. <coughs> Uncoil sweetly and easily. That's what Ben Hogan did. Pull down and through with legs leading. Generate full club head speed. How sweet is the arc of a golf swing when everything's perfect and pat. An ebony blur from the bushes <laughs> and the clubbing connects with the <laughs> The animal has a convulsion. <laughs> lets out a screech of despair, performs like a devil demented, Catherine wheel turns in the air. <laughs> Bronwyn darts out to the rescue, rings for the vet double quick, Thomas is stoned in his basket, and I'm left alone to be sick. <laughs> X-rays and drips intravenous. Tom hangs on to life number nine. He spates in the balance next morning. And by the Lord Harry, so's mine. <laughs> One bloody tough cat is old Thomas. He's back with his family in Lee. An injured eye up for Australia who spray the ball left off the tee. And I'm back on marital golf course <laughs> with Dan every Wednesday at four. Shots headed for river and roadway catastrophically oh. swelling my school. <laughs> <laughs>